let your power be available in the name of the Lord Jesus Lord Jesus let your power descend in this place in the name of the Lord Jesus let your power be palpable in this place in the name of Jesus let your power be revealed let there be in Jesus mighty name we have prayed the Lord has made me to understand something that there is power power for revelation that beyond what the God servant is saying people will be seeing many things one word goes forth and people receive what is theirs that's an unusual dimension people take away what is theirs and everybody has something to receive in this place can someone say father the, let your power be available this morning please turn that to pray in the name of jesus huh? power for revelation power for insight huh? in the name of jesus huh? just one more means power for revelation power for insight huh? power in the, in such way that may we receive what they have not seen before may we see what even the servant of god has not said in the name of the lord jesus huh? let the heavens be opened over this meeting lift up your hands to jesus say father let the heavens be opened huh? let your power descend in the name of the lord jesus huh? let your glory descend in the name of the lord jesus huh? let your power be manifest in this place in the name of jesus huh? do what you alone can do in our midst huh? in the name of jesus Jesus, ah, ki go go ara ye ne bo da ju wi pe. Jesus ni koloba, lori ya ye go go. Papa, Father, Father, we give you praise. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Last prayer point. Saints shall, shall hear me and they shall obey me. They shall be sent out of their hiding places. I discovered that in every gathering, there is the power of witchcraft to steal the word of God from the hearts of men. So that meetings like this become failed meetings. It will not happen like that. Strangers shall hear me. Can you say after me? Say strangers. Say like people that understand what God is saying here. Say strangers shall hear me. And they shall follow me. They shall bow. They shall hear me. And they shall obey me. They shall be sent out of their hiding places. In the name of Jesus. Can we decree God's counsel in this meeting? We cast them out in the name of Jesus. Saint just we send you back in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee in the name of Jesus. Huh? Declare the God's counsel over this service in the name of Jesus. Huh? Saint just, Saint just, you will have no place in this meeting. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Demons tremble at your presence. Oh, the mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything we think about you is great. Keep us simple. Sing it. Demons tremble at your presence. What a medical mission! What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything redeemed of God. For all you have done for us Oh Lord, we are very, very grateful We say thank you Jesus Thank you Daddy Oh Lord, we are very, very grateful For all you have done for us Oh Lord, we are very, very grateful We say thank you Jesus
good, oh. oh yes. The Lord is good, oh. oh yes. The Lord is good, oh. oh yes. Your God is good, oh. oh yes. My God is good, oh. oh yes. Now if they make me they clap, make me not clap, oh, oh yes. yes. The Lord is good, oh. oh yes. The Lord is good, oh. oh yes. The Lord is good, oh. oh yes. Now if they make me the wave. something in my life yesterday I want you to bless him that God I thank you for this meeting I want to thank you the truth of the word of God is very scarce in our days for God bringing his word unto us I want us to bless him I want us to worship him I want us to glorify the name of the Lord Father you are faithful thank you Jesus thank you Father oh God for what you are doing we magnify and we exalt you. We magnify and we praise you. We lift you up higher. 
Jesus will lift you up higher. Blessed be unto your name, O God. Your name. In Jesus' name we pray. worship you. Lord, lead us by your spirit. Thank you, almighty father. In Jesus name we pray. Second Samuel chapter 6 verse 27. One woman ran to the king and said, King, help us. And the king answered, in 2 Samuel 6 27, he said, and he said, If the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? That's the situation in Nigeria now. If the Lord did not help us, help cannot come from anywhere. And now, reason this Jesus festival, there must be a mark in our nation that this festival is holding this year. There must be something that we can point to that God has done. And after this prayer, the Bible says in 2 King chapter 7, the Lord, the word of the Lord came. Said, by this time tomorrow, there is going to be a change. That's it. After this prayer, 2 Samuel chapter 7, the Bible says, by this time, the word of God came to Elisha. And he said, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow. So we are going to pray, King of glory. We are going to shout as a church. Brethren, don't say, ah, we have been praying this prayer. Sometimes, when we are talking about corporate anointing, this is an opportunity for us. So I want us to join us together as servants of the Most High, as workers in the vineyard, and cry, King of glory. In Nigeria, come and help us. Shall we shout in the name of Jesus? I want us to shout this morning. King of glory, help us in our land. No man can help us. No man can help us. You are the only one that can help us. Father, we cry for help. In this nation. In the name of Jesus. We cry for help. We cry for help. Help us in Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. We cry for help. In Jesus name we pray. One prayer point came to me yesterday. 
when I was told, we are going to pray every power, every power that is resisting change in Nigeria we raise your standard against them. Every power, I don't know those powers. Every power resisting change. Our team is stop resisting. We are going to enforce it. That's our team. We are enforcing our team. Lord, anything resisting change in Nigeria, we raise your standard against it. Shall I begin to pray in the name of Jesus? Shall begin to pray. Father, we resist. Anything that is resisting change in Nigeria, we resist you in the name of the Lord. We resist you in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Reke postatalia. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us I want us to walk this out in the light of the scripture. Psalm 125 verse 3. Please open your Bible. Psalm 125 verse 3. I want us to work it out. I'm using the new living uh, the new international version. He said, "The scatter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted." To the righteous. Listen. You know, I got it better. I said, the scatter of the wicked will not remain on the land. Where is our land? Where is our land? The Bible said that scatter will not remain. There are some things we need to enforce the word of God. We need, you know, it's the word of God that is going to bring the change we need. The, the scatter. Let me tell you something as a Christian. You, we have our own scepter. We have it. Our own rod. Amen. Somebody should raise his rod up. Raise your rod. Raise your rod. Raise your rod. You don't see it. You may not see that rod. You may not see it. It's not your Bible. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, God handed over authority to you. Bible says, I'm giving you power. Immediately you gave your life to Jesus Christ, authority has been handed over. And that reason you can say to anybody, any, anything that is contrary, you can tell them, hold on there, and they stand. That's it. Tell somebody, you have your own scatter. When Moses and Aaron got to Egypt, they brought out their rod and they threw it to the floor. And the Bible said that rod turned to snake. What happened to the enemy? What did they do too? They also brought their own out. So you have your own too. So you are going to use your own this morning to command every rod of wickedness we swallow them we command the rod of righteousness to swallow them. The Bible says they are not going to rest. I love that version. I love the way the version says. It says, the scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. By the grace of God, we are children of God. Amen. And this thing is in line with our team. He says, for then the righteous might use their hand to do evil. So, when the road of the wicked is on the lot of the righteous, righteous, that's what the man of God said yesterday, the love of many will was go. We begin to, we begin to shift because the road of the wicked is prevailing. Therefore, Lord, every road of the wicked over this land will set them on fire. We set them ablaze. As from today, we command you to cease. The Bible says that rod of the Egyptians vanished. They could not get it back. And the children of Israel, they were able to possess their possession. As from today, we destroy every rod of wickedness. Over this land, shall we begin to pray in the name of Jesus? Pray in the name of Jesus. Every rod of wickedness 
over Nigeria. We destroy you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Every road of wickedness. We destroy you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you will not remain. We command in the name of the Lord. You will not remain on our land. In the name of Jesus. Rekepo shakala galaba. Ribo sekete yebo leke yebo. Reke leke bo In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. I'm sorry. I'm going to say this. When I was growing up, I was used to my mother buying milk in cartons. I'm, that's what I'm used to. My mother, but we are not rich. I don't come from a rich family. We are not. Amen. I remember when I was doing IT, my salary that I was con con collecting in the bank is more than what my mother was collecting in her place of work. How much did I collect? I think I was collecting 120,000. Uh, 120 naira. My mother was collecting 110. Yes, I can still remember vividly. 110 naira. That was how much she was collecting. But I remember in those days, we bought milk. Milk. Not Miki uh, Bule Bule. Miki Olomi. Praise the Lord. Miki Alagolo. I say, Miki Alagolo. Omara, Mpalini. Alo ma muni. Alo mu. Omara, Mpalini. One lowo, shuban, they can afford it. Lord, we force restructuring. Let me tell you, I'm not talking about the restructuring everybody is crying for outside there. I'm talking about God's restructuring. Let me tell you something. I don't know whether you agree with me this morning. We can change things. I am not one of those. I don't believe Nigeria cannot change. One of my friends came to me. He said, Sami, let, five, six years ago, he said, let us leave Nigeria. He said, you are even more qualified for me, more qualified than me to leave Nigeria. Within a year, he processed his visa and he traveled. And I told him, I said, God is not asking me to leave. I said, God is not asking me to leave. He said, hey, you will regret it. I said, I will never. You are going to pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know who didn't want his structure. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that you will know when we are talking about restructuring. God. You know, the man, the man of God that ministered on Sunday. He said God is going to bring restoration this week. I don't know how many of you believe it. He said one of the things God is going to do in this meeting, this week, is that he's going to bring restoration. Lord, we force restructuring upon this land. We force it. Let there be a restructuring. Father, let there be a restructuring. I want you to be mad at it. I want you to refuse anything that is contrary to restructuring. I want you to refuse it. I come against it. In the name of Jesus. Jacob Olebo. Rima Sataliaba. Yekataye Likaliba. Zubolebo Satalia. In the name of Jesus. Lord, restructure this land yourself. Let there be a divine intervention. Let there be a divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. 
Ramo sekelege yebo bo shatala balaba. Ramo ma shakrege lege bo sedere yebo sedere yebo. Elamo si taliba shantaria. Elamo skili bo shantaria. In the name of Jesus. Hey. In Jesus name we pray. One thing that gladdens my heart, the Bible says we are men of like passion. Like Elijah. The Bible says, decree, there shall not be rain in the land. And there was no rain. Amen. Bring your scepter out. Bring it out. Bring it out. You are going to use your scepter. You have it. By the reason of the anointing as from today, you are going to decree. Listen, let me read something for you. Isaiah 55 verse 11. I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. That was the anointing that Elijah used. Elijah used. That was what he used in his own day. Shall not go back unto me void. Listen to what Amplified says. It says, without producing an effect. Without produ producing an effect. But it shall accomplish that which I please and propose. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it to. Father, we send forth your word to the south, to the north, to the east, and to the west. Father, restructure every angle. Restructure every angle. Shall I begin to pray in the name of Jesus? We send forth your word. Restructure our economy. Restructure our education. Restructure our politics. Restructure our agriculture. Restructure everything. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That is our cry. This morning. We cry for restructuring. In the name of Jesus. By the help of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Rebo Shekelegebo Sandaria, in Jesus' name we pray. That scripture says, Lift up your head, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, that the King of glory may come in. Every ancient gate that said no. That said no. Every ancient gate that said no. To this we are declaring. Father. We command them to be lifted. Sherry. Sherry Modi. Everybody have to One of our brothers was interpreting it. Only I want gate in here. Kokoro I want his son. Kokoro I want gate in here. That fish. Oh you can't go see me. Only so God didn't have option. The only thing God can do is to remove it. I don't know whether you agree. Should we remove it? Huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Every gate that is in down in our peace, every gate that is in down in our convenience, every gate that is in down in our breakthrough, every gate that is in down in, oh God, that you want to do, resisting us, we command them to be lifted this morning. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, command, use your scepter, use your scepter. I command you be lifted. You, these gates. You these gods, I command you be lifted in the name of Jesus. Lekepo shakalagaba. Yebo sekelege yebo shakaliaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you be lifted. This gate, I command you be lifted in the name of Jesus. Be lifted in the name of Jesus. 
Be lifted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Please take your Bible because the word of God, the Bible says, is quick and powerful. That's the only weapon we have to fight. We are the only army that win our battle on our knees. If you don't know how to use your knee, the devil will rubbish you. We are the only army that win our battle on the knees. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Say, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God. What is this grace doing? I'm going to change my version. I'm going to change to amplified version. He said, this grace, it has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness in religion and worldly passion and desires. The reason why we are not making change in Nigeria as Christian is because of we compromising. We Christian, we compromise. And that reason, this meeting is telling us yesterday, that's what we had yesterday, that we have to change. And we cannot change except we start training ourselves. And the only thing that can train us is the grace of God. When I woke up this morning, I was just crying for it. Grace. Oh, Ni Oh yeah, oh, Jesus, come for our Oh, 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 To break grace, grace, to reject every ungodliness, grace to reject worldly passion, grace to desire to live right, grace for self control. Father, I receive today in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. I receive grace, grace to train myself to deny ungodliness, worldly passion. Grace to seek God. Grace to walk with God. Grace to choose the right path. Father, I receive in the name of Jesus. I receive in the name of Jesus. I receive in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Our time is up. We are going to take this last prayer. The man of God here yesterday told us God is wiping away tears. He's wiping away tears. Bibeli Yoruba, or in Davidi 138, Iroyayo, verse 7. Oni le Odoju jako ko ibinu Molaike, oni odojuja, biberi ronya yomoka, ole ma batiem, odojuja ko, ibinu awon tame. So tiba, oni osi fi awo agbara regba me, olu walo sey, bobo ibinu awon talori aye me, lori onto feshe, olu wa dojuja ko. Doju Jacobo bo awon ibinu awon ota awon abinuku mi doju jare ko won oluwa fi owo agbara gba mi ninu ipade yi oya gba I want you to pray father confront every enemy of my peace of my liberation doju Jacobo bo ibinu awon 
water in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus if you are going to be a man if you are going to be a man if you are going to be a man if you are in the name of Jesus Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Almighty God, we have prayed. Our own is to ask. Your own is to do it. We hand over all our requests. The one we can touch and the one we are unable to touch. King of glory. Let there be a divine intervention in the name of Jesus. In all our churches, by the power in the name of Jesus, let us witness your peace. Let us witness your peace in the name of Jesus. And we pray, oh God. That righteousness we are crying for, let it start from us. In the name of Jesus, make us a light to our world. In the name of Jesus, we agree in the name of the Lord. Nigeria, you are delivered. Nigeria, you are delivered. Lots of law. But we tell us, see, Thank you, Jesus. Do something wonderful for the Lord. Do something wonderful for the Lord wherever you are. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Now we would like to also give out of our substances back to God. Uh, thank God those of us here, we are workers in the church in one way or the other. So uh, we should not be part of those who will now be sensitized or be whined to give to God. Uh, I'm aware of what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, especially verse 5, about the Corinthian church in their giving. But he said, they were able to give because they first gave themselves to God. So, I begin to wonder at times when Christians we don't give as we ought to give. I ask myself, have we given ourselves to God indeed? So as workers, I believe people should not be telling us how we should give to God. Some of us probably for two, three, four, five, ten years, we are used to giving 50 naira or 100 naira maximum. No matter the meeting, I know what I'm giving. 100 naira. I think we need to change. We should not remain static. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So I want us to bring out quality offering for the Lord this morning. I'm not whining anybody, but make sure it's a quality offering. Make sure it's something that can provoke God. That can provoke God to say, Ah, my son, my daughter, has done well. I will bless him or her. Let's lift it up as we pray. Gracious King of glory, we are grateful to you because you are our Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. We thank you because you have always been providing for our needs. And so out of what you have given unto us, no matter what we give back, it is not enough to equal what you have done. Father, this morning we are before you again to give unto you out of that which you have given unto us in the first place. We ask, O oh God, that you accept it from us 
as a sweet savour in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we give, we pray that our heavens will continually be open in the name of Jesus Christ. That none of us, O oh God, will experience financial famine in the journey of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in whatever we lay our hands to do, we shall continually receive your blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, Father, accept this offering from us. Use it for the expansion of your kingdom in our own time. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. The ushers will wait on us as I take some few notices. Again, we like to remind us that this evening, the crusade continues at 4.30 p.m. But we'd like to plead if we can come early, I know we will equally start early. So if, we, if the place is packed full by 4 o'clock, definitely we don't have to wait till 4.30 before the program starts. So let's be there as early as we can for the crusade this evening. Tomorrow again, we will gather here at 9 a.m. Uh, for the final lap of the workers and ministers conference. While tomorrow evening will also be the uh, final lap for the crusade for this year. And then on Thursday in the morning at 10 a.m. at our mother church, the Cathedral of St. James the Great, is the enrich program. Uh, as the carries have been ask to send in candidates we know the number so let's ensure we do just that and let's not forget the sextings at the headquartered churches god bless you as you do so in jesus name there are three books here written by a minister and preacher a teacher at this gathering the first one says, only Jesus Christ and him crucified. Only Jesus Christ and him crucified. It is a critical role of the cross in the gospel. This goes for 600 naira. The person who will attend to you is outside there. You can just obtain a copy. Let the ushers get here too, please. The second one says, He that is born of God. He that is born of God. Fundamental truths to transform the life and experience of the believer in Christ. Fundamental truths to transform the life and experience of the believer in Christ. It goes for 800 naira. And then the third one, which is every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall what? I can't hear you. Are you not convinced? At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So, the title of this is Every Knee Shall Bow. The mission of the church to the lost world. The mission of the church to the lost world. It goes for a thousand naira. So, you can afford yourself a copy of any of these books. Only Jesus Christ and him crucified. He that is born of God and every knee shall bow. 600, 800, and 1,000 naira respectively. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now we invite the worship team. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking 
For things that could not satisfy But then I looked at Lord Jesus He said draw from the well That never shall run dry Fill my cup Lord Fill my cup Lord I lift it up their father to receive to be instructed to be directed we open our hearts and we say father glorify yourself glorify your name be highly lifted up in Jesus name amen Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. I was told there will be an announcement. Ejo, awa to jekpe yoruba la fe kalo soke ba jeshe lano. Please let us turn our Bibles to
to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We want to look at something that is meant for us. And we want to tell God to help us with it. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Acts 2, 17. I will read it first, verses 17 and 18. Then after that, we shall stand up to read it together. And then we shall pray. Acts chapter 2, I read from verse 17 and verse 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Can we stand up together and read it? as the direct word of God that does not need the interpretation of any man? Or do you think it needs any interpretation? Does it need any explanation? No. Can we read it together? 17 and 18. 1, 2. Let us go. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. That is the vision of God for us, especially at these last days, as we saw yesterday. I want us to personalize it. I want us to speak to God, each person, as the Holy Spirit interprets these two verses to your heart. For example, it is said in the last days. Maybe you need to remind God, I know it is the last days. This is the time you are talking about here. The time that you promise that you will be generous with your spirit. You say you will pour it upon all flesh. I am a flesh. I am a flesh standing before you. Pour your spirit upon me. And you say we shall prophesy. Maybe you don't understand what it means to prophesy. It is not important. All it means is you will speak forth. You will speak forth for God. Say to God, I want to prophesy. I want to speak forth. Can we begin to cry unto God? Father, it is the last days. 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 You say it will come to pass in the last days. It will happen in the last days. It will happen in the last days. It will happen in the last days. These are the last days. These are the last days. Amen. Maybe you need to tell God. It is written in the last days you will pour your spirit upon all flesh. Let not this your word fall to the ground concerning me. You said in the last days you will pour your spirit upon all flesh. See me here. 
that's your word. This your word will not fail in my life. As we have written this, so let it be. Let us pray. Father, this your word will not fail in my life. It will not fail in my life. You say in the last days, you will pour your spirit upon all flesh. We are in the last days. These are the last days. This word you have said it. You say it will come to pass. Let it come to pass in my life. Let it come to pass in my life. Let it come to pass in my life. You say it will come to pass. Father, let it come to pass in my life. Let it come to pass in my life. I am a flesh standing before you. I am a flesh here. Pour your spirit upon me. I am a flesh. Pour your spirit upon me. The word of the Lord says, Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Will you tell God, I am a son, I am a daughter. I am a son and I am a daughter or I am a daughter. If the enemies of God are looking at me, they see me as a son of God or maybe they see you as a daughter of God. Let them not look at my life and not see the fulfillment of this prophecy. Father, let not people look at, your, look at my life and not see the fulfillment of this prophecy. You said you will pour your spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I am your son, one of your sons. I will prophesy. I will speak forth. I will speak forth. I will speak forth. You said that young men shall have visions. If you consider yourself as a young person, remind God that it is written. Young men, that includes also young women, they shall have vision. They shall have a vision of God. God will show them things to invest their lives upon. Give me vision to do something tangible and concrete with my life. Give me vision to do something concrete and tangible with my life. And if you consider yourself as an old person, he says, old men and women shall dream dreams. Maybe you will tell God, the dreams they are talking about here are not useless dreams. Dreams of the things of God. Father, when I sleep, let me have the dreams of the things of God. Dreams that are ignited by the Holy Spirit. The dreams that are ignited by the Holy Spirit. Speak to me in my dream. Speak to me in my dream. Speak to me in my dreams. That I will not have useless dreams. But dreams in which we shall be speaking unto me. Ah, Father, you said you are going to pour your spirits on your servants, men and women. You will pour your spirit upon them. We pray for ourselves as a diocese. Pour your spirit upon us. Pour your spirit upon us. You say we shall prophesy. Let us prophesy for you among our neighbors, among our co workers. Among, uh, among those that are around us, make us to be prophets. Establish us to, as prophets. Maybe you need to tell God, establish me as a prophet. Establish me as a prophet to speak forth for God at this end time. That I will speak forth for God at this end time. Let me speak forth for you. Father, we thank you. Because these are the end times. And you have said concerning the end times that we pour your spirit upon all flesh. We gather before you as flesh candidates to receive your Holy Spirit. Let him be poured abundantly upon us in the name of Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. Do we need the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, we need you. The Comforter, we need you. Take charge of us. Take control of us. Fill us. Let our lives be no more our own. 
Let our lives be no more our own. We release ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Say to God, I release myself to the Holy Spirit. I release myself to the Holy Spirit. That is the good news of this end time. The Spirit of God in the heart of men. The Spirit of God in my life. The Spirit of God in your heart. That is our inheritance at this end time. Oh, spread that I this round. Wherever man is found, wherever human heart and human woes abound, let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound. The comforter. Can we sing that chorus? The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The Holy Ghost from heaven. The Father's promise given. Go spread the tidings round. Wherever man is found, the God. Ah, Father, we gather to receive the promise of the Father. We want the promise of the Father. The world needs the Holy Spirit. The world needs your gospel. We are ready to carry your gospel. But fill us with the Holy Spirit. 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 The Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Let us be seated. We are still going to pray. The Lord seems to be saying to me that what we need is the Holy Spirit. Do you agree with me? And He can ignite a move of the Spirit in our doubts during this Jesus festival. Is it possible? Please turn to me to John. John chapter John chapter 16 um, chapter 15 excuse me John chapter 15 it was towards the end of the ministry of our Lord Jesus and he was talking about how his work that he started would continue John chapter 15. Let me read from verse um, yes. John chapter 15 from verse 26. It was the Lord speaking. He was talking to his disciples. He said, but when the comforter is called, who is the comforter? Even the spirit of truth which comes from the father, what will he do? What will he do? He shall testify of me. Who is going to talk to the world about Jesus? Who is going to talk to the world about, about Jesus? Holy Spirit. Then he says in verse 27, and ye also, who are the ye also? You will bear, excuse me, you shall, you shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Uh, I want two young people that I want to use as examples, two young people that are filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Can two young people come here? I want us to demonstrate something. Thank you, sir. Maybe only one young person is here. Yeah, two are here. What's your name? Adesheye. Adesheye. And what's your name? Adebayo Koride. Let's go. Koride Adesheye. Suppose I talk, I'm talking to Adesheye. I say Adesheye. One man is coming. All the work that I'm supposed to do here, his name is Koride. He will do it. And you also. Have you understood the instruction? Adesheye. One young man is coming. He's going to do a lot of work here. And you also. From the way I've spoken, who is the principal? Who is the associate? Now, so that to be clear, let I want somebody to, to answer. Who is the associate? Who is the principal? Is it Adesheye or Korede? Who is the principal? Who is the principal? Korede. Adesheye is just an associate. In fact, in your body, we say, Amut Balegbe, Abi. In fact, if Adesheye is an arrogant man, he will be angry. Adesheye, one man is coming, he's going to do all this work. But you also, as if he is an afterthought. You have not understood. Have you understood? Jesus said to the disciples, when the comforter comes, he will testify of me. And you also. Who is the principal? The disciples or the Holy Spirit? Who is the principal? Actually, the church is an associate. Like an afterthought. Do you know that at least twice, Jesus was saying, now, I know that you people can be zealous. I'm just trying to, to, to exaggerate a bit. Don't start the work. Did he say that? Don't start the work until Kodede comes home. Don't think because uh, some things will get bad. Don't start. Did Jesus say that? Please go and see that, sir. Who is the principal in the work of the kingdom? And he said, if he does not come, what shall we do? Don't start. Don't say, in fact, if we don't do something, many things will spoil. Let it spoil. Are you following me? Eh, we have to do something. In fact, if you don't, don't start. Wait. If he's not there, don't walk. Did he say that? Is the Holy Spirit important? Can we do it without him? You know, I want us to pray. Maybe one of the prayers, I pray that prayer. Maybe I have sometimes allowed my zeal to make me to do it when the Holy Spirit is not there. I know I have been guilty of that. Is there another person that knows he has been guilty of that? Is there anybody that has been guilty of that? Then say to God, the starting point is forgive me for the different ways in my zeal, in my earnestness, I have done it without waiting for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the principal. We are associates. Amut Banegbe 
I am indispensable. But the Holy Spirit is not. I don't have to be there. But the Holy Spirit has to be there. Oh, Father, we pray. As you are reminding us anew and afresh, forgive us in the different ways that we forgot that we are associates and the principal is the Holy Spirit. We reiterate it to ourselves. This morning, the Holy Spirit is the principal. We are just associates. Help each one of us to remember that is an associate. Let us walk as associates. Maybe we pray, Father, teach me how to walk as an associate of the Holy Spirit. Some of us, we have been walking as usurpers. Father, forgive me for walking as an usurper. Teach me, I need to learn it. How to walk as an associate of the Holy Spirit. I want to be an associate of the Holy Spirit. I want to be an associate of the Holy Spirit. I want to be an associate of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, we spent time to explain the last days with its peculiarities because our theme is the urgency of the kingdom service in the last days. We needed to remind ourselves that it is the last day. And we looked at things that are peculiar to this time. According to the word of God, there are things that, that are peculiar to this period that we cannot survive until we are very, very aware of such things. We want to continue from that point to zero in a little bit on the things that constitute kingdom service. The work of the kingdom. Yes, in these last days. What are the things? What is kingdom service? Who are kingdom workers? But let me first of all remind us something. We are workers in the diocese. But actually, as far as God is concerned, everybody in the church must be a worker. Hallelujah. And that is the framework of our being a church. I want, us to, I want to divert a bit into that before I come back to what constitutes kingdom service. Especially because maybe the priest will understand this thing I want to say more than many of us. Can we turn to 1 Peter chapter 2? 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter was describing the believer in relation to Jesus and also the believer in relation to the body, the church. Let me start reading from verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 2. To whom coming? He's talking here about Jesus. We come unto him as 
a living stone. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, we believers, we also we are lively stones. What was Peter saying? He said, Jesus is the living stone. In the Greek original, the A that is put on the, before, the, uh, before, before he, a, a living stone, is not there. In the first case, actually, the way it was put is that he, Jesus, to whom we call as living stone, there was no article there. So the idea is that Jesus is the living stone. But every believer is a living stone. He is the living stone. Each one of us is a living stone. Is there a difference? The image, what Peter was trying to say is that he is the living stone. We are like fragments. Hallelujah. None of us is the living stone. He is the living stone. We are, each one is a living stone. And the context of living stone is like, we are like building blocks. Blocks that should be used to build. That is the idea of a believer in the congregation. So he continued, he said, we are living stones To build up a spiritual house. Every believer in a congregation is a building block. Do you understand that? When our priests will stand before a congregation, he sees each one as a building block. Maybe I'm not speaking good English. Or are you correct? Are you understanding me? Okay. He's seen each one as a building block. Peter is saying, as a congregation, as a church. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm sorry. As a congregation, we should form a spiritual house. Because that is what you do with building blocks. You build a house. The difference between a building site and a house is that in the building site, you have the material. But in the site, somebody has put labor to make sure every stone has its place. This place used to be a building site. Maybe we stack 10,000 building blocks. It will take workmen, our clergy, and that is their work, to place each block. Do you know how masons work? They will take a block. He will put it here. He will remove it. This is not his place. This is better than in another place. If I, he may cut it small, isn't it? He will trim it. And make sure every block occupies his place. By the time he finishes working on the blocks that are stuck in the site, you no more have a site, you have a building. Our congregation must be seen as potential house that are probably still in the state of a building site. And the principal work of our clergy is to ensure that each building block find a place in the house. So which means every member of the congregation has its place. Is that true? 
It is an aberration to be a member of a church and all you are doing is to come and listen. It is not church. But it is the responsibility of the clergy to make sure sometimes we have to use all every grace that God will give him to help each person to find his place. So that somebody will be doing something. In fact, Jesus say, said it in a different way. Mark chapter 13 verse 34. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a man that is going on a journey and he gave unto every man, all his servant, his work. Every servant, everybody in their house must have a work. Hallelujah. I am praying that this will become a reality in our diocese in Jesus' name. So that when we are talking of workers meeting, everybody is a worker. It is not correct not to be a worker. Do I make that one very clear? So let me continue. So, as workers that we are, not because we are specially different, but simply because we are in Jesus. We are workers. So, what is the work of the kingdom? When John the Baptist was manifest, he began to preach something that sounded strange and new. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 1, he says, I'm going to read, in those days, John came, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judah. And he was saying, what was he saying? Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was talking about a kingdom Things that people knew about a little from the Old Testament, but not much. Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a kingdom that has come. You can enjoy this kingdom. That was his message. When Jesus came and he started his ministry in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Do you remember how, what he was preaching? Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the message. That is the message. What we call the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, is that yes, this world is a kingdom of the enemy but there is a kingdom of God and you can enter into it that is why it is called good news to call people from the kingdom of the devil where they are some of them without knowing involuntarily of course some of them voluntarily but most of them involuntarily, by default. But you can come. There's a kingdom of God that has come and you can enter into it. That is the message of the kingdom. The work of the kingdom is to call people from the kingdoms of this world into the kingdom of God. That was the work that Jesus started. And that is the work that he asked us to continue. 
That was why whenever when he was calling his disciples let's say someone like Peter he said follow me why did, why did he say you should follow him because I want to make you something what Fisher of me I want to use you to bring people I know you you, you, you are used to fishing fish but now I want you to begin to fish human beings from the kingdom of devil into the kingdom of God. Follow me. And when he was going, that was the work that he gave his disciples. He said, this gospel must be preached everywhere. The reason why we have church or let me ask a question or draw your attention to something. Do you know that if we preach the gospel to somebody and we tell him you are a sinner, repent from your sin and he repent from his sin and he didn't have time to start going to church and he died. Will he go to heaven or will he go to hell? I'm not hearing him. He will go to heaven. But suppose even that person is converted and for one reason or the other there are no churches around him. So he never go to church. Will he go to heaven or he will go to hell? Huh? You, I heard somebody say hello. Heaven. Then why do we say people must go to church? In that case, let all of us stay at home. Why church? And I will answer the question. You know in that passage we read in 1 Peter chapter 2 he said we come together we are like building block I am a building block you are a building block even the priest that is leading us is a building block we are all building block to form what, what they say we are going to form a spiritual house hallelujah God wants to build a spiritual house that will show forth, he, he went out to say, the glory of Jesus that called us from darkness into his marvelous light. Our coming together is not because we have nothing doing Sunday morning. Our coming together is part of the strategy of God to reach the world. It is that as we come together, there's a synergy. That's a new word now. Uh, any, how can we call it now? It's more than cooperation. There's a contribution of each one of us in this work of the kingdom of God. The purpose of church is for us to contribute each one is little quota so that as we come together we join forces for the work of the kingdom. So brethren As workers, first of all, as Christians, we are called to work. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? You are not working because, well, if I don't work now, the vicar will be angry. That's not why you are working. That is not the reason you are working. Our 
actually, if the vicar wants to punish you because he's not angry with you, you say, okay, the work we are doing, stop it. We don't want you to work again. And you begin to cry. Please, what do I do? I need to work. I know some people that don't understand. When they say don't work again, they say, thank God, I'm on leave. But if you understand the issues, and the vicar wants you to wants to punish you. You will say, Well, you, you have been singing in the choir. Okay. You will not sing in the choir for some time until you understand what we are talking about. That is the mindset of this work. It is a privilege to work. And that is the vision of Jesus for each one of you. That is the vision of Jesus. I belong to a mission, Capro, where it is only a person that understands that matter that can work with Capro. We don't pay you salary. In fact, actually, you pay to work in Capro. Because not only that we don't give you salary, we expect you that if you believe God has called you to do this work, God himself will raise the money for you to do the work. Initially, when we first started, we said, that is what God said we should do. People said, if you don't work, it will not work. But God began to speak to certain people. When God asked me and my wife to go as missionaries to Senegal, I could sell all that I had to go. Because as far as I'm concerned, it was God that said I should go. Isn't it? Capro is just allow me to use their name. Look, if you're in this church and they allow you to sing in the, in the choir, your mindset should be, ah, God wants me to be singing to glorify his name. I want to thank God for all souls that allow me to be doing it around me. That is the mindset of this working. So that when we have that mindset, we can say, well, brother, because we notice you are not serious as an usher. Because anytime ushers are meeting, you always come late. So we don't want you to be an usher again. You will begin to weep. Because you are not doing it for the church. You are doing it because that is the reason why Jesus calls you. Is that so? Jesus said to his disciples, follow me. I will make you. Working as a worker is interesting. But there are conditions Let us turn to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 26. The person that sees it first can read. John chapter 12, verse 26. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let me read it because many people be here. John 12, 26. If any man serves me, if anybody wants to serve me, if anyone wants to sing in the choir, if anyone wants to be a usher, if anybody wants to be a youth leader, if, I, if anybody wants to go into the ministry as a priest, Jesus says, listen, there is a starting point. From that passage, what is the starting point? John 12, 26. If any man wants to serve me, what should he do? Let him follow me. What it means is that if somebody says, excuse me, priest, me, I want to begin to sing in the choir. You know, sometimes we want to first of all know if he knows how to sing very well. Do not to sing, yes. 
Say, do re mi fa so la ti do. Ah, yes, you know what to say. Okay, okay. Join the choir. Jesus said, if anybody wants to serve me, somebody comes to the vicar, I want to be singing in the choir. The first thing the vicar will ask, have you been following Jesus? What has been your experience in following Jesus? How has Jesus been dealing with you? How have you been relating with Jesus? That is the starting point. Even if he knows how to sing, he cannot sing. I have known churches. Maybe it is not so much in the Anglican churches. When a rich man comes to the church for the first time, they will just make him a member of the building committee. <laughs> Do you understand? Do you know that I don't know the who is the best musician in Nigeria? Suppose last Sunday he came to this church and he was converted. Do you know that even if he wants to sing in the choir, we must not allow him? Do you know that? Because he must first of all learn to follow Jesus. We don't serve God. Listen, I want to say something that may that may want to embarrass you. We don't say we don't serve God with talent. God does not use talent. If you have a talent, God will want that talent to be transformed into grace. Is there a difference between talent and grace? Talent is what you have because you have it and you are the one who has it. So when we are talking about it, you will be doing your shoulder like this. But by the time they search you to begin to learn how to follow Jesus. Your shoulders that are high will fall down. Oh, let me give you an example in the Bible. If I will make it like a, like a parable, I will see we get it. If anybody that gets a parable, I will give him one of my books. There was a man in the Bible. He has the power and capacity to do one work. If I started to do the work. But God made sure he didn't succeed. Many, many, many years after. When God now asked that man to do that same work, this man that had been struggling to do it, the man said, I cannot do it, oh, I, I cannot do it. This was a man that started doing this work, and God said, No, you cannot do it. He thought he could do it, and he started to do it. But when he went through a time of brokenness, God said, Start doing it. I said, Ah, it is not possible. If it is not possible, I cannot do it. Who knows what I'm talking about? Ah, so since, I, since you didn't allow me to call you, I won't give you my book. <laughs> Moses was qualified, was it not so, to lead out the children of Israel. And he knew he could do it. He was very arrogant. He could do it. He saw two, he saw one, one Egyptian beating one uh, Israelite. He dared to kill him. Nobody could ask him. 
He was doing like some of some people in Nigeria. I said, I will kill you, nothing will happen out of it. God has delivered us in Jesus' name. But God made sure that thing didn't work. When God began to deal with him and was humbled, the man that felt he could do it realized he could not do it. The talents and his capacity have been transformed to grace. So, do you agree with me? God does not use talent. He will wait for that grace, for that talent to be transformed into what? Grace. If a very talented man, you bring him to the choir, the first day he comes, they say, okay, before we start, let us pray. Say, ah, no, this is not a matter of prayer. This is a matter of practice. If I will come back to the vicar, if I'm, I cannot sing with these people. Instead of let us do practical things, we spend about 30 minutes uh, just, just praying. In fact, this is not how we do it. If you are not careful, he will destroy the choir. But after some time, that he has learned, as Jesus said, he said, if anybody wants to serve me, let him follow me. When he has begun to follow Jesus, when he gets to the choir, he does not come like an expert. You see, talent makes you to see yourself as an expert. Is that not the meaning of talent? When we say, well, this our sister, he has a talent to sing. See, we pretend to be able to say, well, we thank God, we praise God. But you see, he actually, she is not thanking God. If they have not said it, that she has that talent. She said, well, you may not recognize what some of us have, but we thank God. But by the time her talent is transformed to grace, when they want to say, well, the person that is talented is, ah, no, sir, this is not good now. Are we not a body? No, 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 no. Hallelujah. May your talent be transformed to grace. And it will, it will only happen as we begin to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. May God give grace to our priests to help us, to guide us, to monitor us our following Jesus. So no pertinent question to ask us. When husband and wife that are supposed to come to church together, they come in two different cars. There may be no problem, but sometimes there's a problem, isn't it? You know, sometimes your work as ministers will make you to ask questions on things that don't concern you. That is the work of a pastor. I hope there's no problem that Madam come with her car. In fact, I noticed that when the service finished, she just drove off as if she's angry. Was she angry about something? It concerns you. Jesus said, if anybody, anybody wants to serve me, let him learn to follow me. He said to some other people, Peter, James, John, he said, look, follow me. What will I do? I will make you. You know, the meaning of I will make you, let me try to explain it a bit. As if he was telling Peter, Peter, as I'm seeing you like this, my interest is not what you are, but what I can make you to become. It is not because you are perfect or you are good that I'm interested in you, but I can make you to be good. It is not because you are prayerful that I've made you to be the leader of the young people, 
But I've chosen you because of what I can make you to become. Are we, are we still understanding? It is not because you are very, very serious and disciplined that I call you to be a priest. But I can walk in you. I'm seeing what you can become. I am seeing what I can make you to become if you only follow me. Let me put it together. Workers must see themselves as raw materials in the hand of God. What do I say you should see yourself as? If somebody goes to market and see yam, you know yam usually in the market can be very, very dirty. Do you know that you are not buying the yam for what you are seeing? But somewhere in your head, you are not seeing that yam. You are seeing pounded yam. Actually, the reason you are buying it is not what it is, but what you can make it to become. That is the meaning of I will make you. As you are buying that yam, you are not thinking of what it is, of what you, but what you can make it to be. Uh, is somebody still following me? Do you know that when you now take that, powder, that yam to, the, to your house and you wash it, no problem. You cut it. As you are cutting it, every yam can talk. Ah, I didn't know it would be like this now. You put it on fire. Ah, ah. In fact, every yam could talk. As you put it on fire, I am cooked already. I am cooked. Then you put your fork. You are not cooked. You put more fire. You are making meat. Oh, I don't know whether you are not understanding me. That yam is a raw material. But you have a vision of what it can become. You did not buy it because of that thing you saw. But because of that thing you are imagining. The Lord God of heaven that called you as a priest, it is not because of your qualification. Are you listening to me? The only thing your qualification will do is that you make it easy for God to transform you. Some people are difficult. You know, there are some yam that are difficult to cook. <laughs> there are some people when God wants to transform them, it is not easy. God has to injure them. You don't know. May God not, not have to injure you. Before Paul, Saul could be, could be caught, he had to be made blind for three days. He had to fall down. That is what it took for God to catch this man. For him to begin to walk in him. As workers, you must see yourself as people following Jesus. And as you are following Jesus, he's working in you to make you what you are not. But the process of making you something is always a painful process. Is it painful? It can be painful. But it is part of the growth. It will not destroy you. Oh, let me say in, the, in ministry, and I'm talking now to my brethren, the, my brother, the priest. In ministry, the process that we go through for, for, for God to make you, thank God he has, he has not shown you the other thing. You can say to God, I don't want to become it. The young will not know you are going to put him in the on, on, in fire when you are buying from the market. If he has known, he would have been saying, I don't want to go with this man. We notice that everybody that has worked for God, there are people, 
in whom God has worked. As worker, the first interest of God is not the work you do for God, but the work you allow God to do in your life. Maybe that is where I'm going to stop this morning. And the question is, are we allowing God to work in our lives? Are we allowing God to make us? Oh yes, he made Peter. Peter did not find it easy. But he made them to become what he wanted them to be. May he make you to become what he wants you to be. This morning, we are going to pray to end. And our prayer is that I want to serve you and therefore I'm following you. Make me. Make me. Except you allow God to make you, you are not likely to become anything useful. And I can tell you that in ministry, I've learned a few things in ministry. I've seen many servants of God, those that have positive testimonies, and also those that have negative testimonies. I've learned quite a lot of things from many people's lives. I've seen men of God that ruin it. I've seen ordinary workers. They are not even full-time ministry. They have done great exploits for God. It pays to serve God. It is necessary to serve God. I want to serve God. May it be a fresh beginning for each one of us in Jesus' name. Let us begin to pray. I want you to begin to thank God for the grace of making you a worker. Like we said, every member of the church is supposed to be a worker. But if you are, that is a grace that he has given you above many others. Bless the name of the Lord. It is a privilege to serve God. It is a privilege to serve God. There's a song that I know, if we know it, sing this along with me. I don't sing very well, but I tell when I come to points like this, I have to sing. It pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart. He will always be with us if we do our part. There is not in this wide world come pleasure our fall. There is peace and contentment in serving the Lord. I love him far better than in days of yours. I'll serve him more truly than ever before. I will do as he bids me. Whatever the cause, I'll be a true soldier. I die at my fall. When often I'm tempted to turn from the trial, yes, Lord, I think of our Savior. My mind wanders back. To the place where they nail him on Calvary tree. I heard a voice saying, I suffer for thee. I love him far better than in this of you. I love him more truly than ever before. I will do as he bids me, 
Let it be a fresh beginning, my father. Let it be a fresh beginning. Let it be a fresh beginning. Father, deliver me. Deliver me from those things that are destroying my ministry. Deliver me from destruction. Deliver me. Father, deliver me. Father, deliver me. Father, deliver me. I want you to thank God for the vision that God has for you. God has a vision for you. That is why he called you. Maybe you will tell God, I want to fulfill that vision you have for me. I want to serve you. I want to serve you. I want to do your will. I want to do your will. I want to do your will. You say if anybody wants to serve you, let him follow you. I follow you, Lord. I follow you, Lord. I follow you, Lord. When it is easy, I will follow you rejoicing. When it is difficult, I will follow you trusting. When it is confusing, I will follow you believing. I will follow you. I will follow you. I will follow you, my Lord. I will follow you. I will follow you. I will follow you. I will do your will. I will do your will. I will do your will. I want to pray particularly now for those that are going through times of discouragement in their work they are doing the church or in their ministry. You are going through a time of discouragement. Yes, there can be discouragement in ministry. There can be discouragement. There can be discouragement in the work we are doing. I have gone through times of discouragement and it took God each time to keep me going. It took God. It took God. I remember there was a time I was saying to my wife, faith has departed from my heart. I did not commit any sin, but there seemed to be a pressure I could not explain and I knew I was dying. Yes, I know of at least two, three times that I knew I died. I was dying. I was dying. And it was God just intervened. These are some of the dangers in working for God or in ministry. Let everybody sit down. If you think you want us to pray for you, over this issue, you just stand up. You don't stand up, and we are going to pray as a congregation for you. You know, you pass through times of discouragement, times when your hands are like stooping down. Tell us if I should not continue. Just stand up where you are. We are going to pray. We are praying for people, yes, that are going. You know, you are going through some discouragement, and you want God to help you. You want God to help you, yes, Father. I am praying, Lord. I am praying. I am praying for these people. Some of the problems may be their own and it may not be their own. But Father, arise for them in the name of Jesus. You have called us to labor. You said we should lift up the hands that hang down. And shaking the knees that are bent out of the way. Let those hands that are hanging down be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Let the faint hearts 
Receive word of encouragement. Relaunch him. Relaunch her into his work, into her work in the name of Jesus. Speak the word that he needs. Speak the word that, he, that, that she needs. Father, that we may be able to say it pays to serve Jesus. Even when it seems as it is difficult. Even when it seems as if we are overwhelmed. Father, when we are overwhelmed, lift up, up to the rock that is higher than us. That we shall stand upon the rock that is higher than us. And we shall continue by grace. Father, we shall serve you to the end. We shall serve you to the end. We shall serve you to the end. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Having appreciate our teacher, let's begin to pray for him for more grace. I believe strength, energy has gone out of him. Pray that God will renew him as we come back tomorrow morning to bless us the more. Pray that God will give him word for us. As he stand here tomorrow again, we will not be seeing him. We we'll see God speaking through him. Begin to land up your prayers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have your seats briefly. Uh, we want to pray for one of us. Today is his birthday, the Reverend Ibi Warrior. Can you stand up your feet? You want to come or you want to stand there? Okay, we don't know how many years you are celebrating, but my is okay. Is close to 40 years. Let's appreciate God in his life as I invite. Uh, okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your servant. Let's mark his birthday today. It's a privilege you have received from you. I pray, Lord, you will continue to bless him, continue to guide him. As Jesus Christ tally, you will mark your 40th birthday. You will celebrate 15. You will celebrate 80. Whatever is your heart desire, even in the ministry, in your family, God will grant unto you. May God give you a gift of birthday today. May God bless your life. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe it will tell you where we are having reception after now. <laughs> On behalf of the grace, I want to appreciate our, our teacher for blessing us today. I believe all of us are literally blessed. But let me remind us one or two things he said before we pray together. One, a worker 
should understand that he or she is not working for anybody but for God. Two, working for God is a privilege. Working for God is a privilege. Three, your talents and capacities will be transformed into grace. Four, God said, my interest in you is not what you are, but what I will make out of you. Then five, we should allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the privilege to be here to hear your word. We thank you for the privilege for calling us as workers in your vineyard. We thank you for the word that we have heard this morning. We thank you, Lord, for reviving us. We thank you, Lord, for energizing us. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we are just a vessel in your hands. Lord, for all that we have received today, as we leave this sanctuary this moment, we pray the Holy Spirit of God will go with us. Baba, after this three days prayer workers conference, our life, our ministry, we never remain the same in Jesus' name. Whatever is our heart desire, Lord, at this three days workers conference, we receive in Jesus' name. As we go, go before us. Dilect our step. Meet us at the point of our need. Even this evening crusade, we pray for the man of God. As a man the stage, you seem to bless life in Jesus' name. And as we go, go before us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and forevermore.